What's going on everyone, it's Trifle here and thanks for checking out this video. In this one I'm going to be going over why the Destiny 2 new DLC feels like an EA level scam. In case you guys don't know, recently Disney contacted EA about Star Wars Battlefront 2's loot crate controversy. Pretty much they were making the game feel like a pay to win with microtransactions. And well, Disney took action and EA had to pretty much get rid of that. Now I know I may get a lot of hate over making this kind of video because I'm speaking more of the truth instead of what people want to hear about what they paid for, but I feel like if I discuss this it will help the community open up their eyes about what they are actually paying for and maybe Bungie would eventually hear the complaints from the community and actually listen instead of just doing what they want to do. They have a great game here and an amazing opportunity to make this game freaking amazing. But the problem is, are they really trying hard enough? The answer to that is simple, no. So first off, let's take a look at Reddit. There is a lot of complaining here about the Curse of Osiris. I'm just going to show you a couple of these posts, starting with this one. It seems, yet again, there was more time spent developing Eververse than the Curse of Osiris expansion, which is true. If you think about it, this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to make this video. Half of the new items, pretty much like 40 to 50%, are found through Eververse. That's including exotic ships, exotic ghosts, new shaders, new emotes. I mean, the list goes on about all of that fantastic stuff that we just want to get our hands on. Obviously, I'm just kidding here. They're pretty much just all cosmetics. It's not really affecting the gameplay whatsoever, which brings me to the point that it isn't necessarily a pay to win. So they aren't really doing the same exact thing as Star Wars Battlefront 2 did, but they are still upping the chances for people to spend money on silver to purchase stuff from Eververse to get the new that was introduced in the Curse of Osiris. Is it worth it? Absolutely freaking not. Once again, the truth that I'm speaking right here could hurt some people's feelings that have spent over $100 on Eververse to get these cosmetics, which in reality, there are plenty of people that have done that and Bungie and Activision have thrived in business because of it. And you gotta think, the whole gaming world is a business, but there are still some not soulless developers out there that are actually making good games. I'm not saying, once again, Destiny is a bad game. It has potential. I just feel like the developers are becoming soulless and just worrying about the money perspective. And that thought really stood out to me when I got to experience this first DLC that was introduced in Destiny 2. I have a lot to complain about with this Curse of Osiris DLC. I'm tired of being a smiling face with Destiny and acting like everything is just perfect. Like, oh yeah, I'm having so much fun in the Curse of Osiris. Oh yeah, purchase it if you haven't. Oh yeah, it's awesome. It's a great time. No, I'm tired of freaking being like that, and a lot of the major content creators over Destiny are acting like that. Deep down, are they truly feeling like they are enjoying this new DLC? Probably not. There needs to be more voices for the community instead of just acting like everything is fine and dandy. And I'm going to be one of those voices. I have covered Destiny content for years now. I'm worried about the future of this game. I feel like it's already about to crash and burn over this DLC. I was having so much hope this was going to save Destiny 2 because the end game content was lacking majorly. And now this add-on, what the heck even is this? Why did we have to pay for this? This is like something that could just be updated in a game easily, I feel like. One new planet, and then we get to experience a shortened version of the original raid that we just played, and get to experience the same theme. I can go on and on about this, but I'm not. I'll get a little more into this, though, further in the video. Anyways, here's another post. I mean, you guys can just go to Destiny 2 Reddit and see all of these posts that are being made about the Curse of Osiris. A lot of the community is not agreeing with it which I like to see that because they're speaking the truth and the developers need to know the truth in order to improve. Even though more than likely they're not going to exactly listen, they're just going to continue to do what they actually want to do. Which in the end, it's all just a huge business and they want to make the most out of what they are trying to sell. But this Reddit post says, and I completely agree with it, Destiny 2 Curse of Osiris gives you less content for more money than the base game. That is hands down the truth. I maybe spent like two to three hours completing the campaign in this new DLC. I was like, okay, there better be more to the end game. And there was a little bit, I'll give Bungie that. The new forge mechanic was interesting because it was something brand new in the Destiny franchise. But half of the new stuff was cosmetics being behind Eververse, and then we got our throwbacks of a lot of old exotics that was already in Destiny 1. And I do remember a bunch of developers saying, I don't remember what developer it was said by, but they had mentioned people were complaining that there isn't enough content in Destiny 1. In Destiny 2, 
they will be complaining that there is too much content. Now, whoever just said that sweet little lie was full of their self. Now, I'm gonna ask you guys this question. In the Curse of Osiris DLC, do you honestly feel like you got your money's worth? If you do, explain down in the comments on why. If you don't, well, I completely agree with you, and I'm going to continue to explain my opinion on why I feel like we didn't get our money's worth. So I talked about the cosmetics that was in this DLC, the storyline on how short it was. Now let's go ahead and talk about the exotics that were introduced in this DLC, and also let's get into Destiny 1 and what we experienced going through that game compared to this new game that we're experiencing here. When I think about it now, there was actually enough content in Destiny 1 compared to Destiny 2 anyways. Like, there was way more new in Destiny 1 than there was in Destiny 2. I mean, think about all these throwbacks they're giving us. I mean, there are a few brand new exotic weapons. I think there's like two or three brand new ones. But other than that, they are throwbacks. I mean, just a few that I can name off the top of my head. We got here Graviton Forfeit, Shinobu's Vow, Helm of Saint 14, The Stag, Jade Rabbit, Telesto. Yeah, that's all I can really name off the top of my head, but still, that's quite a bit exotics that were just thrown back into Destiny 2. Bungie's like, oh here, have these. I don't feel like being that creative. I mean, if they're pretty much throwing back this many exotics into Destiny 2 from Destiny 1, why don't they throw back the old planets as well? I mean, think about it. That would be pretty cool. Sure, there may be some complaints, but for the most part, I don't really see people complaining about that. I think a lot of the community would actually enjoy that. We get new secrets, new public events, new story missions on each planet to enhance and make up for the lack of story content in Destiny 1 on those planets. And also maybe they could have even introduced some of the old raids and just maybe add a little bit different mechanics in each one of them so we get kind of like a new experience in them. Maybe Atheon's dead but something else took over in the Vault of Glass or something. Or maybe we get introduced to a character that's in the lore that was lost in time for instance. They have so much potential with Destiny. I don't get why they aren't putting it into action. Maybe like I said before, they're really not wanting to spend a lot of time. Instead, they're just trying to make some quick bucks. Anyway, since I'm on the topic about the old raids, let's talk about how the first expansion was for Destiny 1, The Dark Below. What all we got out of that compared to this first expansion in Destiny 2. We got brand new spanking weapons, a new theme of weapons, and also a new themed raid. We got to experience going against the Hive. Not to mention all the new exotics that we got our hands on. I mean, think about it. All of them, of course, was brand new. There was no throwbacks because, you know, they had no chance to do some throwbacks. So in the end, we got more new exotics in Destiny 1 compared to this first DLC. And also, instead of us getting to experience a new themed raid like we did in Destiny 1, we got to first experience Vault of Glass, and then we moved on to the Hive. But yeah, in Destiny 2, we're going to be playing the exact same theme. We're still going to be going up against Cabal, and this is going to be a shortened version of the original raid. Sure, we may go up against some new bosses and whatnot, but it's still the same theme, and we're probably going to get similar style of weapons as we did in the original Leviathan raid that we first experienced. When I first saw this raid, I was like, heck yeah, this is awesome. Can't wait to see what the new raid's going to be, because I knew the next DLC coming up was the Curse of the Sire, so I was thinking it was going to be located on Mercury. No. Instead, it's just a shortened version of what we just experienced. What Bungie actually needs to do for Destiny 2 is to add another DLC like the Taken King. That expansion was phenomenal. Back in the day, when I think about it, I was complaining about the Destiny 1 DLCs, but now I'm like, wow, the DLCs were actually worth it, and we got to experience very new scenarios. Instead, in this first DLC that we experienced in Destiny 2, it feels like we're experiencing the same old thing. Like the story was just like two to three hours long, and the adventures are extremely short. The only real new concept out of this, I feel, are some of the weapons. Like I felt like that insectoid grenade launcher, the colony, was really unique, and the forge concept. But other than that, I mean, Mercury isn't all that large. It's extremely freaking small. I thought when we were going to go back into time, we could, you know, travel to other planets or something. Same with the Dark Future. I thought we were going to experience what happened to other planets. But no, that didn't happen. I just gave this too much hype. If you guys made it this far, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on what Bungie should actually improve on to make Destiny 2 stay alive. Bungie needs to hear our voices on what we think this game needs. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Destiny. I love Bungie. I grew up playing their games, but I'm out of here though, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. Till next time, peace.